to understand uh, diffuse lung disease, interstitial lung disease. Uh, and our first speaker today is uh, Dr. Mike Gottway. And Mike is a good friend and also a member of the uh, chest imaging section at Mayo, Arizona. Uh, he's going to speak today on diagnosing UIP, IPF, and the imaging distinction from the major non-UIP and IPF mimics. It's a very pertinent subject, and <clears throat> several times during the week, uh, I'll talk with Mike uh, or Chris, who was here yesterday. Uh, so, Mike, thank you. Thank you, Bob. So what I want to do is first start with where we are right now with diagnosing UIP, which to some extent has already been a refinement in the criteria uh, from several decades ago, and then where we can go further to completely refine the diagnosis or really further refine the diagnosis of UIP, and then we'll compare those diagnostic criteria with some of the major mimics that you may encounter in practice. So what we know right now with UIP, and this is going all the way back to 2003, even before that, and certainly a number of studies since then have duplicated these findings. When we see these patterns on CT, patchy, peripheral, basal, subpleural, irregular, linear, and reticular opacities, intralobular interstitial thickening or intralobular lines, honeycomb lung, and traction bronchiectasis with a little bit of upper lobe findings. The findings are basal predominant, but we see things in the upper lobes. And if you see ground glass opacity in, the, in areas of fibrosis, this is what UIP looks like. When we see this on a CT scan in the proper context, we don't need a biopsy. And this is probably what you're used to seeing. If you look at the coronal image here that's playing forward, you can see a little bit of the basal reticulation in the bases, how there's that gradient from apex to base. That's something we expect to see with UIP. We got pretty clear subpleural cystic change that we could probably agree is, uh, is uh, descriptive of honeycombing, and we'll get more into that in just a second. But when we see this CT scan, which recapitulates the words that I just said, we know that we're dealing with definite usual interstitial pneumonia. And when we see that pattern, we don't need a biopsy. So once again, subpleural basal predominance, reticulation in the upper lobes, and honeycombing. Interestingly, in the ATS criteria, consensus criteria, they say honeycombing with or without traction bronchiectasis, which in itself is an odd statement to expect to see honeycombing without traction bronchiectasis. And I'll get back to that more in just a minute. Uh, and you should see the, or you should note that there would be features inconsistent with the diagnosis of UIP. Those features should be absent. I listed a few here, but when I get to a little farther on how you should report or how UIP cases should be reported, I'll uh, expand on that a little bit more. So with that in mind, with those diagnostic criteria, we can see the case here. This is pretty clear-cut UIP, patchy basal subpleural reticulation, clear areas of honeycombing. If you use that definition, does it mean that these cases are not UIP? Maybe you could argue there's a little bit of honeycombing there, depending on how tightly you want to call things. I certainly don't see it for here. I see a little bit of traction bronchiectasis. 